tonight's 12th man. There he is, Sean Alexander, the NFL MVP in 2005, led the Seahawks to their only Super Bowl appearance. And he gets to hoist the flag tonight. shelter for you. And Al, once again, the 49ers will have to contend with the noise here in what's being called the biggest regular season game in Seahawks history. Week 16 last season, the San Francisco offense failed miserably at dealing with the crowd noise. There were mistakes and miscues, and Colin Kaepernick had to burn two timeouts by early in the second quarter. So tonight, the plan is to shorten the purpose of the play calling, spend less time in the huddle, and rely on to make sure the messages get around. That's going to be key, Al. I'm standing where the tight end would be, but if I go to where Colin Kaepernick is behind center... That is perfect. Now, that is a sideline report. Michelle, we'll keep your mic open. Some folks would probably love to close ours, but <laughs> you got us anyway. Great report. I thought she was going to sing the national anthem. And there's Sean Alexander, as if the crowd needs any more enthusiasm. Steven Hauschka will kick off for Seattle. Paris Cox to run it back for San Francisco. Seahawks won the toss and deferred. So here we go. Week two, the marquee matchup in the NFL. And it's a ground ball that will go through the end zone. And the 49ers will take over at the 20 yard line. Let's take a look at their starters. Colin Kaepernick, Nevada. Frank Gore, the U. Bruce Miller, Central Florida. Anquan Bolden, Florida State University. Kyle Williams, Arizona State. Vernon Davis, University of Maryland. Joe Staley, Central Michigan University. Mike Yupati, Idaho. Jonathan Goodwin, University of Michigan. Alex Boone, the Ohio State University. Anthony Davis, Rutgers. There were so many teams, it starts up front, and that's a great interior five that the 49ers have. They start with Frank Gore on the ground. He bounces it to the outside, but only for about a yard and a half. K.J. Wright comes in to bust up the play. Kaepernick, last week, after he had destroyed Green Bay with his legs in the playoffs, last week with his arm, the 49ers, only the second man in history, and they go without a huddle here. Four touchdowns, 400 yards last week against the Packers. They come up to the line without the huddle. The 49ers use a lot of different formations. And they run the read option with Kaepernick going around the right side before Wright takes him out of bounds. It'll be third down and about five. And one thing I'm thinking is that the 49ers think, well, they can't hit themselves in the huddle, so they go no huddle here. Uh, if there is a wall in the noise, and there's not much, we've learned from Peyton Manning over the years, it's in those few seconds right after the play's been run. So the 49ers trying to use that here. Kaepernick off the play fake to the outside he goes, and that'll be caught by Bruce Miller, but he has to go down to make the catch, and the line judge comes in to spot it just short of the 30-yard line, and that means the 49ers are three and out, and in comes the punting group. Pete Carroll. The Seahawks coach knows a lot about defense. He was the Niners defensive coordinator for a couple of years in the mid-90s. Andy Lee to punt. Golden Tate will run it back. Lee, one of the best in the league. To the 15-yard line. Tate has a lane. Begins to slip. But retains his balance and takes it all the way back to the 50-yard line. 35-yard run back. Scooter makes the tackle. Let's take a look at the Seattle starters. Russell Wilson from a whole pack of Badgers. Marshawn Lynch, Oakland, Ice City, California. Derek Coleman, 
UCLA, Sidney Rice, Gaffney High School, Golden Tate, the University of Notre Dame, Zach Miller, Arizona State, Russell Okun, Oklahoma State, Paul McQuiston, Lebanon High School, Max Unger, Oregon, J.R. Sweezy, NC State, Bruno Giacomini, Malden High School. Overcast when we came on, a little bit of rain right now, might have some over the next hour or so. From the 47-yard line, Wilson begins with a handoff to Marshawn Lynch. Takes it across the 50-yard line. Last week, Lynch and the Seahawks couldn't get a running game going in Carolina, but Wilson had a great day. Passer rating at home. That was last season when the Seahawks were 8-0 after Russell had won the job in training camp in a shocker after he'd beaten out Matt Flynn who came over from Green Bay and they'd given him a lot of money but it was Wilson all the way all season long rolling right going deep and the pass is incomplete intended for Luke Wilson let's take a look at the 49er defense Ray McDonald the University of Florida Ian Williams Notre Dame Justin Smith Missouri Amar Brooks UVA Navarro Bowman Penn State Patrick Willis Ole Miss, Alden Smith, the University of Missouri, Carlos Rogers, Auburn University, Dante Whitner, the Ohio State, Eric Reed, Louisiana State University, Terrell Brown, DBU, University of Texas. Base 3-4, not a lot of tricks. The 49ers last year blitzed less than any team in the league. And most of the outside, and that's incomplete, intended for Sidney Rice, and Wilson hits the deck. So each team begins with a three and out. Sidney Rice just coming back from a bit of a knee issue. He finally managed to play 16 games a season ago, but uh, for both these defenses, a good start to this one, to be able to go get their offenses back out on the field. John Ryan is the Seahawks punter, and Kyle Williams sets up at the 49 or 10 yard line. the punt Craig Gall came in blocks it and the 49ers are going to get it at about the 33 yard line there was some confusion up front with Seattle a couple of guys were looking back as they got ready to snap the ball and it winds up as a block and now Carroll's going to ask for a penalty on San Francisco I'll tell you what happened somebody in the stands or something blew a whistle that's what Pete Carroll's saying our guys stood up you could see the Seahawks players just standing up thinking the play had been called off and instead the 49ers run right by him and block the punt. Pete Carroll's exactly right. I heard exactly what he heard. There was a whistle blown from somewhere on the field and he is incensed right now because his players relaxed thinking the play was called off. Watch right here. Could you hear a whistle in this game? From the 33-yard line, Kaepernick's going to keep it and slides to a hole at the 26-yard line. All right, here's our audio. Let's see if we can hear the whistle. I mean, that's no accident. NFL players do not stand up like that. I'm telling you, I could hear it. Second down and four, and Kaepernick will keep it. To the 27-yard line he goes after the fake handoff running the read option, something they did not run all that much last week against Green Bay. It's kind of interesting. Looks like Seattle is basically daring Colin Kaepernick to run this ball. They're crashing the ends down and taking the linebacker and using him on the running back. And so far, Kaepernick's had to carry it himself. Out of the pistol after he juggles the snap, he gets it away, and that's caught by Vernon Davis. One of the great tight ends in the league. He takes it to the 21-yard line, and that's the first first down of the game. Well, blown coverage that time by Seattle. One of the X factors when you play the 49ers with all the man coverage that Seattle wants to play is somebody has to cover Vernon Davis, and that is a huge chore. He's one of the best. 49ers use a lot of different formations, a lot of shifting. Here's Gore. To the 17. Let's take a look at the Seattle defense. Red Bryant, Texas A&M. Tony McDaniel, Tennessee. 
Brandon Meebane, Crenshaw High School. Michael Bennett, Ailey Taylor High School. KJ Wright, Mississippi State. Bobby Wagner, D. Utah State. Malcolm Smith, USC. Richard Sherman, Stanford. Cam Chancellor, Virginia Tech. Earl Thomas, DBU, Texas. Walter Thurman III, West Virginia High School. On second down and seven, Kaepernick with a ton of time and then throws and it's incomplete. Intended for Bruce Miller, the fullback, going deep downfield, cutting across to the outside at the two-yard line. Earl Thomas, the safety, staying with him, third and seven. Bruce Miller going to work his way all the way across the formation, and right in the middle of the field, Earl Thomas, simply one of the best safeties in the game, diagnosed it perfectly there. Richard Sherman right there. Play clock at one. Kaepernick's going to take off. Kaepernick with his legs to the nine-yard line. He can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his legs. Colin Kaepernick, who last year, remember, didn't even start until Alex Smith got hurt and played the second half of the season, led them to the Super Bowl. They try and bring pressure, and he just finds a gap. They bring those linebackers looping around, but he had a chance to step up and through and had to go head first to pick up that first down. From the nine yard line. Good play fake. Spinning away and just throws it away then. Chased by Clinton McDonald out of bounds on the throw. It'll be second down and goal. I'm not sure Anquan Bolden knew this was a pass or he was trying to fake out Richard Sherman in some way. Or Walter Thurman, I should say. He's out there blocking. Now he kind of slings him off, and maybe Thurman just grabbed him, which is what threw off the play. And second and goal. The backup back is Anthony Dixon. They have three backs. Gore, of course, is the workhorse. They like Kendall Hunter a lot. He's coming back from an injury and played well last week. Gore comes back in, and Dixon is the other back. It'll be third down and goal. That time they had the nose tackle, Ian Williams coming over to play the fullback position with lead block on K.J. Wright. Intercepted at the one yard line and run back to the 12 yard line. Third and goal. Thurman deflected it and then it's picked off and brought back out to the 12 yard line. Seattle dodges the ball. Earl Thomas with the pick. Sunday Night Football from Seattle brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Audi Truth and Engineering. By DirecTV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. And by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Each team giving us some access to seven days to Sunday night. We'll be behind the scenes looking at how each of these clubs prepare for this game tonight at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. So Kaepernick throws the interception. Bizarre beginning of the game, of course, with what we thought might have been a whistle from the stands. The Seattle line not ready. The block punt, but it ends in an interception, and this is incomplete. And clearly, when you go back to the punt, they could have called a false start before the ball was even snapped. Meanwhile, back to the pick. Right out of here, you're going to see Walter Thurman. I think Kaepernick thought this was man coverage. It was not. It was a zone. So Thurman was able to come off his guy and come back and deflect that ball, leading to a huge interception. Wilson starts 0 for 3. Pete Carroll, this is his 62nd birthday. Second oldest coach in the league. Tom Poplin is 67. And Marshawn Lynch with a bust one for a big game after the 34-yard line. Game of 22 yards before the rookie safety, Eric Reed. Makes the stop. It's not really a classic Reed option. This is almost more of a trap. You're going to have J.R. Sweezy come over and kick out the guy who ordinarily is going to 
be responsible for Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch has had three straight games now, over 100 yards against this 49ers defense, and back on track here. To the line quickly come the Seahawks, first down from the 33-yard line. Lynch, and Lynch powers forward, Ray McDonald makes the stop. Marshawn Lynch is so tough, because he had that incredible run in the playoffs a couple of years ago against the New Orleans Saints, busting tackle after tackle, and it even somehow registered on the Richter sure scale. Did. <laughs> it, was, it was an earthquake in the area. Might have been caused by him, partially. Meanwhile, Ian Williams is the nose tackle who is down. For the complete viewing experience, check out NBC Sports Live Extra on NBCSports.com. What good stuff, Michelle from the field. The guest social media analyst tonight, Max Strong, who did such yeoman work as the Seahawks fullback, not part of their uh, radio broadcast team. Max Strong, you can chat with him on that site. And Glenn Dorsey comes in to supplant Ian Williams as the third year nose tackle from Notre Dame. Needs assistance to get to the sideline. There you're going to see the cutback on the back side. And because it's an adjacent lineman, you're allowed to clip the nose tackle in that situation. I have absolutely no idea how the competition committee continues to justify that rule. That, to me, is the worst of all of them in the National Football League right now. I know they say they can't run the ball unless you can do that. That's awful. I'm with you because it's uh, Sweezy. The right guard, J.R. Sweezy, who cuts him. Williams goes down. There's Sweezy with Herb, and now in the game, he's the backup to Marshawn Lynch. He's the running back on a second and seven from the 35. And Wilson, with time, fires over the middle and incomplete. The coverage is very good. Zach Miller, the tight end, covered by Dante Whitner. It'll be third down and seven. The power of having a Marshawn Lynch breaking off big runs is this. You go play action, watch the defensive lineman. you got to play Lynch first, and this bunch, for them not to get to Russell Wilson any sooner than that, lets you know. The other side, Alden Smith <laughs> with uh, Reno Giacobini. Just good coverage down the field. Nice play by Whitmer. A little more than halfway through a scoreless opening quarter. John Parry comes in to make the call. Ball start. Offense, number 89. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Doug Baldwin. Crowd already not happy with the officials tonight because of the non-referee's whistle on what could have been a full start. And there is Williams being attended to. Russell Wilson. Played at North Carolina State and played minor league baseball and played one season at Wisconsin, went into the Rose Bowl on third and 13 and the second year quarterback with a big arm throws. The receiver falls down and Eric Reed, their number one draft choice, comes up with the interception. That's two in two games for him. Golden Tate fell down. So the 49ers get the ball back with 7 9 to play in the opening quarter in Seattle. Eric Reed selected in the first round out of LSU. They let Deshaun Goldson go. He wound up in Tampa Bay with a nice contract. So there's Reed with a pick last week and one tonight. From the 30-25-yard line, the 49ers begin this drive on first down. With Kaepernick taking the door, swinging it to the outside. Kyle Williams will pick up a first down as he gains... 15 and back we go to the interception well first of all this is not pass interference down the field anytime you just have tangled feet with both players going for the ball that is not interference and now you're going to see the stunts that san francisco is going to try and do with alden smith inside as a defensive tackle to try and enhance that pass rush Give to Gore. He's had some huge games in his career against the Seahawks. Bobby Wagner, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle after a gain of four. Jim Harbaugh 
third year. He's done a magnificent job with this team. Took him to an NFC Championship game to the Super Bowl last year, 1-0 this year, calling the play in. We asked Kaepernick last night, what does it sound like in your headset? He sounds like, sounds like static radio. <laughs> Second and six. And a flag. We have our first noise penalty, I think. Mm -hmm. Full start. And the rated on. And Anquan Bolden, former Cardinal and Raven, who had a tremendous minor debut last week with 13 catches against Green Bay. Second and 11. Kaepernick buying time, throwing, and the pass intended for Gore on the play where he gets outside, and now he jaws a little bit with Wagner, and it's third down and 11. Really, the protection rock solid. There just isn't anybody open down the field. Seattle is an unusual team in that they play almost exclusively eight-man fronts to put pressure and then man coverage all over the field. Here's Vernon Davis uh, working against Walter Thurman, who's had a big start to this game. Of course, he's playing in replace with Brandon Browner, but they, they weren't concerned at all about him being in there. Play clock all the way down to zero. They do get the play away, and it's caught by Clinton Packers first career catch rookie at a Louisiana Tech and maybe they did call it the flag came out late the clock as you saw was at zero to the snap leg yep. in. <laughs> looked like they had gotten the play off but then the flag comes out after the play had developed and there goes Patton's first career catch at least to the moment well, the worst thing that could happen to the 49ers is happening the crowd now fully realizes they're having an impact on this game. And if they were into it before, <laughs> now listen. It's like being at the end of a runway. Third and 16. And that's caught by Williams up at the 40-yard line, but well short of a first down. Richard Sherman, the outstanding cornerback, making the tackle, the punt. Well, they're just going to play soft. No man coverage here when it was third and that long. Make the catch. Go ahead. We'll come up and make the tackle. Richard Sherman was a little fired up about this game, wasn't he? I uh, don't think there's a lot of love between him and Jim Harbaugh. He played for Harbaugh at Stanford. Booming kick by Lee. And Tate's going to let it bounce, and it bounds into the end zone. So Russell Wilson still looking for his first completion. Takes over the 20, no score. Well, he's helping find the criminals we don't even know about. But can he be trusted? James Spader does a great job in this show. I saw the pilot. It's outstanding. The Blacklist, Monday, starting September 23rd, after the boys right here on NBC. Well, seaplane action. Pretty good pilot there, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Pretty good. Nice segue. There's Kaepernick, who's 4 for 8. Wilson has started 0 for his first 5. Seattle has only one first down. They start from the 20 yard line. And he fires, and that's incomplete. And looking around, Sidney Rice, and he will get the flag. Rice interfered with. Rice and Tate are their top receivers and they'll get one back in Percy Harvin after hip surgery maybe in mid-year his parents pass interference defense number 22 automatic first down spot of the foul Carlos Rogers Looks like he may have just grabbed him a bit right here take a look it was off and one thing they're they're looking for the dead giveaway we've seen it all day today in the NFL you tug that jersey, no matter how hard, Ready? that flag's coming out. Seven-yard penalty. 
And Wilson under pressure is going to go down. Glenn Dorsey who comes in for the departed Ian Williams. And speaking of Williams, here's Michelle. Yeah, he is out for the rest of the game with what the 49ers are calling a leg injury. I can tell you, Al, that I observed it was the left leg when he was carted off to the locker room. A lot of his teammates giving him a thumbs up as he left, but he is done for the night, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. And meanwhile, Dorsey, who signs as a free agent this year, five years in Kansas City as a starter, comes in and gets that sack, setting up a second down and 15 from the 22. Turbin is the back. They give it to him. To the 27 he goes. It'll be third down and 10. Willis makes the tackle. Starts to rain again. You know, one of the keys against this stretch play is that you have to set a hard edge over here. And Ahmad Brooks is really one of the best at this. He doesn't want this to get going sideways. The shorter he can make that field, the greater the opportunity that Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman have a chance to come in there and clean that up. So rain coming up from the south. Might be heavy over the next few minutes, just looking at the radar. Third down and 10. There's a flag as Wilson gets out of the pocket and just throws the ball away. And lightning strike as well. We yeah. may be headed for a delay here. So that J.R. Sweezy, I think, is going to get the penalty here on the hold. Holding offense, number 64. Penalty's been declined. Result of the play, fourth down. To Sweezy, and it's fourth down from the 27. Interesting. They play on. Well, for the moment. Of course, we know what happened opening night in Denver. I mean, today in, in Tampa, they had about a, an hour delay in the Saints Tampa Bay game. Ryan's punt was fair caught at the 34 yard line by Williams, who takes a bump. But that's all. 313 left, first quarter, no score. Come back. We talked about the bolt of lightning that we saw. Here's John Parry apparently is going to make an announcement because you got with his weather in the Based area. Based on the weather and the safety of the players and the fans. The game will temporarily be suspended for weather. We'll resume play when it's safe to play. Well, the crowd doesn't like it. They're used to rain in Seattle, but there's not a lot of lightning up here. And here we go again as we look at the Doppler. All of the weather has been coming from the south. And it's uh, here it's rolling. And, of course, uh, the red and the, the orange is uh, more severe. The green is regular rain. And there could be some lightning, obviously, uh, when you see the red and the orange. And it's coming up through here, so you can see it moving through the Tacoma area, up towards Seattle, and then behind that, I'm just looking at uh, my own iPad here, looks clear for a while after that. So don't anticipate, this is not like a major front coming through. This is, uh, I don't want to say localized, but it's enough because of safety which has become an issue all over the NFL not only for the players but for the fans not a lot of room to uh, take cover here either and the fans uh, well most of them are staying in their seats as the teams go back to their respective locker rooms the lightning may be uncommon in Seattle but in terms of our package <laughs> <laughs> it's two out of three. Dr. Doppler, you've had a lot of work so far early in this season. I am Jim Cantore's backup it, it on is. this. But we did see the flash of lightning and right. then closely followed by the clap of thunder. So this was this was no false alarm. This was the right decision. No. Then there's some clearing behind this. There's a little bit more weather to the southeast. Speaking of Jim Cantori, we have him on the phone. All right, Jim. What hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah, um, just watching this radar tonight. It's been uh, hit or miss stuff to your east and west. Now, unfortunately, the whole thing is kind of filled in and moving right over the top of you. Probably another 20, 25 minutes worth. 
Uh, you'll probably go in and out of it, but the problem is, is there's lightning, and right. you know that's a threat that's going to be with us probably for another 25 minutes. All right. The other thing I'm seeing is over the Oregon-Washington border east of here, it looks like this severe weather. Uh, is that eventually going to get here? Or what are you predicting? Yeah, you know, Alan, this stuff's just going to keep developing and rotating north. That's exactly right. The, 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 the whole pinwheel is off here west, so everything's coming around that from the south. So, you know, there will be multiple threats as we go through the night tonight. But the big one will probably be within the next 25, 30 minutes. Okay. Meanwhile, Dan Patrick is in the studio, doesn't need an umbrella. And we're going to keep you updated from here. But right now, back to New York. Back in Seattle, Al Michaels, Chris Collins, we're in the show before you. Sunday night football. An hour delay, but if you join us late, some of the highlights. There was an inadvertent whistle that nobody heard, or at least the officials didn't. And San Francisco was able to block a punt, but they couldn't take advantage because it was a deflected pass from Kaepernick that was intercepted. Wilson then threw an interception of his own, picked off by Reed. The decibel level will go back over 100, and we get ready to play after a one-hour delay. And the game restarts with the first and 10. San Francisco from its own 36-yard line. It looks like the weather's going to be good from here on out. Rain is gone, lightning is gone, and off we go again. And it begins with a simple Frank Gore burst up the middle for no game. One of the things the 49ers feel like that they have to do against Seattle, Seattle plays eight guys across that front line. They really don't believe they can get outside against them, so they have to have these gash kind of runs. A lot of traps, a lot of whams to try and hit a crease and go for 40 or 50 yards. That's what we've seen when they've had success running the football in the past. Harbaugh puts the specs on as his team now has a second and 10 from the 35. Vernon Davis gets flanked out. Kaepernick is going to go down. Michael Bennett, who comes in from Tampa Bay as a free agent to help that pass rush, does a number on Kaepernick, gets him by the ankle. Well, Michael Bennett had nine sacks for Tampa a year ago, but I don't know what's going on because Anquan Bolden is essentially either blocking or Richard Sherman's jamming him so badly he can't get off the ball. And they're going to have to do something with Bolden a bunch formation, some motion, something to help him get a release. Third and 20 in the din. A little swing pass to the outside. Davis, short gain, and the 49ers will punt. Well, that wasn't very impressive at all. They were a lot better coming out after the delay in the Super Bowl. So this defensive struggle, which I guess we should have expected with the number one and number two scoring defenses in the league a year ago continues. Lee's third punt. Two prior kicks have been great, 60 and 56, even though one did result in a touchback. This is a one hopper fielded at the 22 yard line and good coverage on the play as Tate gets taken down. CJ Spillman making the tackle. The 49ers defense under Jim Harbaugh took over in 2011. Points allowed, best in the league in that regard over a two-year period. Leading the league in yards allowed per carry only 3.6. Fourth in takeaways. So Harbaugh with an offensive mind and Vic Fangio has done a wonderful job defensively but Jim is his pedigree is offense. Obviously he was a quarterback but defensively the 49ers have been tremendous. From the 21. And this is Lynch. Out to the 25 yard line. Ray McDonald making the tackle. Gain of three. Second and seven upcoming. And the Seattle Seahawks have to be able to run against this defensive look. The reason that Russell Wilson hasn't had any completions yet is they can't run them out of this seven man front. The 49ers strength there. The, those seven guys up there feel like they can stop the run no matter how many tight ends and fullbacks you put in there. Lynch has had one 21-yard run, and other than that, not much. Second and seven. Lynch behind Coleman, the fullback. And Lynch fights his way 
close to a first down. He's a yard shy at the 30-yard line. Navarro Bowman makes the tackle. We're in the final half minute of the quarter. Just a little power football here with the fullback Derek Coleman leading the way. And this is the way they're going to have to win. This is a big, strong offensive line. They've, they've got a couple of pro bowlers up there, Russell Okun and Max Unger. Got to bring those safeties down. And on a keeper needing a yard and getting it. That'll be a first down and it will end a first quarter delayed by weather for an hour. End of one. 49ers, nothing. Seahawks, nothing. And Sunday night football continues after these messages. Waiting all day for Sunday night. Tonight's aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. It's been a rainy night thus far, but it uh, begins to clear in Seattle on this Sunday night as we start the second quarter after a one-hour weather delay. And Okun got hurt on the last play of the quarter. Paul McQuiston, who normally plays guard, is going to play left tackle on first and ten. Ball is given to Lynch after the 37. Let's take a look at Russell Okun. Left tackle and a very important cog in this offensive line. We're looking at his ankle. He is the pro bowler. He's the guy that is assigned to try and to block Alden Smith, who in his first two years, all he does is have an NFL record number of sacks and already one and a half this season in the opener. So this changes the dynamics quickly, and they put a tight end to that side. Second and five, Wilson seeking his first completion, and he has a wide open receiver that's Lynch down the left side. They lead him alone. They forget about Lynch, and he burns him all the way down to the... 27 yard line so his first pass of the night is a beauty and it's 35 yards sometimes when the tight end goes across the field they can forget about the back coming out of the backfield exactly what happened here they see bootleg action away and Marshawn Lynch without anybody around San Francisco loves to play man coverage with their linebackers. Lynch, their best receiving back. That'll be the matchup tonight. He gets a breather, thus Turbin is in the game. There's a flag thrown. Turbin to the 25-yard line. Full start. Oh, and Okun, again, Chris talking about the pro bowler, the key guy along the offense, and that means they've got to move a guard to tackle in McQuiston and bring Carpenter. Illegal the formation of the first. Offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. Back to Okun's injury on the last play of the first quarter. Right over there. Took the left shoe off. And he went to the sideline. We'll get a report, uh, obviously, from the show shortly. Back to the locker room, he goes Turbin still in the game. Wilson out of the pistol on first and 15. And Turbin will take the ball to the 28. Turbin second year back out of Utah State, a fourth round draft choice last year. Well, it's going to get interesting from here. You've got two great ones right there. Alden Smith and Justin Smith, and they're just going to try and hammer it down. Now, James Carpenter, who comes into the game, alternated with McQuiston at guard. He's a big, strong, powerful guy, former number one pick. So physically, he'll be able to stand up. Probably means a little more running now for the Seahawks than maybe even what they had planned. Second and ten, and the botched snap, but the Seahawks are able to recover it. Max Unger is the center. And uh, Wilson wasn't ready for it. Yeah, he was trying to give another audible, and Unger snapped the ball. They're lucky they got away with that. And at least thus far, they're mm. still basically in field goal range. It may change the strategy here a bit. You'd like to have another six or seven yards at least to be able to help your kicker. Third down, 13. And Alden Smith at the bottom of the screen, pass rush now. 99 coming in, gets around his man. Good call. I swear, you must be on a 10-second delay. <laughs> <laughs> you 
usually Great goal. so. Well, anytime you bring a guard out and play him at tackle, it just changes the dynamics. You're going to have to now put some help over there. They wanted to go to their spread formation, but you have to understand there's no way McQuiston on a regular basis is going to be able to block that guy. Nobody can. And nobody can call sacks like you can <laughs> in the history of broadcasting. Here is Ryan's kick. Put some backspin on it, and it works perfectly. Down at the six-yard line by Myron Maxwell. Still no score in Seattle. How do you handle the crowd noise in Seattle? You don't talk. Colin Kaepernick has gone to all hand motions. And a silent count. Well, you got to talk in the huddle, I guess. But the communication now is with hand signals. And then when they get ready to snap the ball, he doesn't say a word. Gives him a hand signal, snap it. From the six. And that ratchets up the decimal level even more. Gore is there. You live near this stadium, you are sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> they are going to bring slot blitzes. They are going to cover all eight gaps. If you're going to hit something in the running game, you're going to have to somehow split the gap. But if you do, because of the man coverage, typically those five-yard runs turn into 40-yard runs. So sometimes you just have to keep hammering. Second and 12, Kaepernick gets out of the end zone and the pass is incomplete as a flag down. He was not over the line of scrimmage as he threw the ball from about the one yard line. Could it be, if it's if it's holding in the end zone, it's a safety and that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a safety. Offense in the 49, the spot of the hole is in the end zone. Therefore, that is the, the fullback, Bruce Miller, Automatic safety if you hold in the end zone, and Miller did. Bruce Miller right there is going to come out, and he kind of wraps his arms around, but I don't think that's what got called. I think that's what got called, sort of the tackle after the fact, and he's working against Malcolm Smith, who is a guy that Pete Carroll knew well came to usc as a running back they converted him to outside linebacker and it pays off with two points there and he replaces the the departed leroy hill as the starter on the outside a lot of safeties in the nfl over the first two weeks four last week two this week and it's two nothing seattle and the 49ers will put it in the air from the 20 yard line and for the first time tonight, we're starting to feel the booth shake a bit up here. Oh, yeah. That one got them rocking. Well, it's going to be a long, long night for Colin Kaepernick if they cannot occasionally hit a run. The one thing that I do think they're still going to be able to do, Vernon Davis is going to be matched up against Cam Chancellor. Chancellor may be the largest safety I have ever seen. Looks like Lawrence Taylor playing safety back there. But that's the kind of one-on-one -on -one matchup. And historically, when the 49ers are struggling and they get man coverage, Vernon Davis one-on-one -on -one with anybody is how they win. Andy Lee, the free kick from the 20. Golden Tate feels at the 28. And Tate down the sideline takes the ball past midfield. Russell Wilson, 109 read option plays last year. He handed the ball off about 70% of the time. He kept it 20 times and threw only 17 passes off of it. Last week, 11 of them didn't keep it at all, handed it off nine times and threw two passes, including Seattle's only touchdown to curse to win the game. Now, what did he tell us last night? He said, 99% of the time, I'm giving it to Marshawn Lynch. He can get five yards a day of 80 guys on these runs. 
Lynch. Nothing doing, and we go to Michelle. Well, Russell Okun is back having x-rays on his left foot. He is questionable. Again, they say left foot. My observation was that the training staff was looking at his left big toe, and he was urging that cart to get him back to x-rays as quickly as possible, as though he wants to get himself back out here, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, it was hard to discern exactly where he got hurt. Let me explain it. It's the toe. We're checking it out, and we'll update you further. Second down and nine from the 48. Inside handoff. And that's an eight-yard gain for Marshawn Lynch. Carolina bottled him up last week. They had no running game, but tonight it's a different story. He's already gained 50 yards on eight totes. Ordinarily, on the read option, you would leave that guy unblocked, but tonight they're blocking him and just running the football with Russell Wilson carrying out the fake. So a little change up here for the Seahawks. But if they keep crashing that dat, that end down inside, eventually you're going to see Russell Wilson pull that thing out and take it around the corner. And a lot of times we'll see it on a third down situation. They only want to run them when they absolutely have to. Third and one. Here he goes. And the 49ers are going to stuff him. Short of the first down, Navarro Bowman right there. The inside backer who sometimes gets a little overlooked because Patrick Willis is such a stud. But he's a great linebacker and it's fourth and one. What's Carroll going to do here? They're going to go without a huddle. End up getting a little safety support that time out of Dante Whitner who is a load. They want to keep the 49 er personnel on the field. He gets an action up front. And Wilson over left guard. Needs a yard to see where they spot it. The crowd thinks it's going to be a first down. It's going to be very close. I'll tell you what, Russell Wilson got tripped. He's very lucky, and I'm not sure he ended up getting that thing. 49ers looked like they were jumping around as well, but we don't see a flag on the play. Yeah, but you see Pete Carroll going crazy yeah. again. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, no yeah. doubt. Justin Smith is over the line. Absolutely no doubt whatsoever. Watch Russell Wilson here sort of trip on his own guy, and that's really what takes him to the ground. Well, they're going to be short of the first down. The crowd was excited that they went for it, but not very excited right now. And the 49ers take over on downs, and Carroll very upset about no flag on the play. 2 nothing walks. On the tour, it comes down to this. Only 30 remain. Who will be this year's FedEx Cup champion? It's the Tour Championship. You'll see it beginning Thursday on the Golf Channel. Coverage continuing on NBC over the weekend, the Tour Championship. Pete Carroll really wearing the officials out. Number one, they didn't pull offside. Number two, he thought maybe he could have gotten a better spot. Look at it on the replay. He could have challenged the spot, but he wouldn't have won. 49ers now take over on downs at their 40-yard line. Kaepernick feels that low snap, slings it to the outside and right through Anquan Bolden's hands. That's news in and of itself. Anquan Bolden started his career with Arizona, played in the Super Bowl against Pittsburgh following the 08 season, went to Baltimore, won the Super Bowl last year, and then he was expendable, just maybe too expensive for the Ravens. So brother to brother, they got him for a sixth round draft choice, and all he did last week was catch 13 passes. Yeah, and he got the news in Africa. He didn't even know it was a possibility. He was over there on a mission trip and got a bunch of text messages saying he'd been traded. Second and ten. Kaepernick flushed. Guns it. And the pass is incomplete. Antoine Bolden makes some pretty good impressions. He started with Arizona coming out of Florida State back in 03. 10 catches, 217 in his NFL debut. Goes to the Ravens in 2010, catches seven. And then last week against the Packers, he was one this day. And don't forget the 49ers playing without Michael Crabtree and Mario Manningham. They're two top receivers from a year ago. Just wonder where they would have been without Antoine Bolden. I think they'll get Manningham back in about a month and Crabtree back maybe in November. Third and ten. Crowd full throat. Kaepernick. Wow. Look out from behind. Loses the ball. Strip. Seahawks recover at the 28. A.J. 
A.J. Wright comes up with the football. It's Cliff Averill making his debut as a Seahawk. Came over from Detroit. Has been injured, healthy tonight, and creates the fumble. And Cliff Averill has a history of this. If I'm not mistaken, I think he is, since he came in the league, third all-time in strip sacks. That guy has a way of getting the ball out. You can see he didn't even try to go for the sack. Went right for the football. Huge play. Welcome back, Cliff Avery. You can see it right there. 16 sack fumbles. The master of that. Fourth best in the league since 08. Over from the Lions and pays his first dividend. First down, 29-yard line. Four-man rush. Justin Smith can't catch him, Whoa. and then he gets hammered at the 26, and boy, that's close. Navarro Bowman with Wilson going down, starting the slide, kind of a half a slide, and Bowman comes in there, and there's no flag. He did slide, but it really came late. It almost, you couldn't tell the difference whether he was just trying to make an inside cut or a slide, and Bowman goes to the head. That's the bigger issue here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can do the other. Maybe he did glance the shoulder first, but... Well, more often than not, you're going to get a flag on that one. Second and seven. What a corner blitz. And get burned on the other side by Lynch to the 10-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Watch this shot right here. Ahmad Brooks is going to have the quarterback here. And, boy, did he ever. That has been a major point of contention with these read option teams. What is legal, what is not, as long as you are in that posture right there and not backing up, that is a legal shot. And boy, that thing is being hotly debated around the league right now. And look at Carroll, who's watched his quarterback get ripped on two plays in a row with no flag. 640 to the half. Lynch. 11 carries, 64 yards tonight. Back to the posture here. And here's the posture. If it's on the left, you've got the read option posture, which means the quarterback is now unprotected. On the right, you see more of the traditional Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, whatever. They're going to protect him. Here's the posture. No question about it. Read option. Now, if he backs up immediately from there, he probably is going to get protected, maybe even throw his hands in the air. He did not. He took a legal shot. <laughs> it was a big one. Second and ten. And Wilson guns it over the middle into the end zone and incomplete. Try to get it to Zach Miller, the tight end. Dante Whitner comes over, covers on the play, third and ten. Well, that was a tight little hole he tried to squeeze that one into. Zach Miller just on a little post. He had to get it around the dropping linebacker, sort of threw it back shoulder, and Miller couldn't quite come up with it. Miller had this huge game in Atlanta in the playoff game. Tried to come back to him there. Throw behind him, and that's it's third down and 10. Wilson is one of eight for 35 yards. One out of nine right now. The only completion was to Lynch. That's intended for Rice. Fourth down. And in comes the field goal unit to try to make it five to nothing. Start calculating earned run averages here pretty soon. You well, know, for Colin Kaepernick, I really think he has to start playing a little more wide open. You know, he's trying to be the drop back guy. He's, but when he is so dangerous, is when they get him on the edge and scrambles, he makes plays. Could use a little bit more of that here tonight. Steven Hauska. 30-yard attempt. And the Seahawks able to cash in after the Kaepernick strip sack. Five to nothing. Home team. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Microsoft Surface. Click in and do more. By National Car Rental. Go national. Go like a pro. By Gravity from Warner Brothers Pictures and Theaters October 4th. By the all new 2014 Lexus IS, it's your move. Team's giving us some um, access for some great still shots during the week. There's Kaepernick on the left. Preparing for Sunday night football, and Pete Carroll upset with John Parry and his staff. They didn't get a, a break on the, the blocked punt. Wilson got racked twice. There was an offside that wasn't called, and 
A fourth down play. He has a lot to complain about. Still winning. Five nothing. And a touchback. Kaepernick will go back to work with 5.52 to go in the half. Five to nothing. Let's go. Green option last year, all the rage. You go back to those three postseason games. Look at what Kaepernick did when he kept the ball. He averaged almost 13 yards a rush. He did it off most of the time, and he only threw five passes off it. And last week, only 13 read option plays, 11 of them were handoffs. Colin Kaepernick better have his head on a swivel now. I guarantee it defensively, they were told, go get him. Takes it. Out of the pocket. Boy, that secondary does its job. It's a good Seattle secondary. Pass rush has been better tonight. Second down and 10. Russell Okun, that's good news for Seattle. Michelle talking about his toe. They went back and x-rayed it, and obviously they gave him the go-ahead to at least come back onto the bench when he's trying to get loose again. Seattle's man coverage has been devastating so far against these 49ers receivers. They have to start winning a few battles outside. They have not. Kaepernick's going to keep it. Gets the first down and goes out of bounds. Stepping away, Walter Thurman was right there at the end and was able to hold off. That's what I'm talking about. He's got to get out. Here the end crashes, so he pulls it out. You've got the lead blocker going out in front. Now you've got Kaepernick getting into his game. I know they want him to protect himself, but this is the game. They have to go beat Seattle. This is the team, their top competition in this division. Everything goes here tonight. is Gore and they stuffed Gore again at the 30 yard line Michael Bennett okay. was there and again for uh, for Gore that's six carries for four yards I'll tell you this Michael Bennett's doing a job inside his quickness as a pass rusher is now paying off in the run game as well and you see the way that Seattle plays they don't try and take on blockers they try to split blockers get in the backfield Fill every gap, and so far they've done it very well. And second and 12. Pass is caught at the 37. That's Vernon Davis after the 39 yard line. Gain of about eight. Third down and four for San Francisco now. Yeah, and that's the matchup I like. I think you have to take your chances with Vernon Davis on Cam Chancellor. That time they made. The tight end, Vernon Davis, the single receiver side, which forces Cam Chancellor in space one-on-one -on -one with Vernon Davis. Third and four. Meanwhile, as they bunch receivers, including Bolden to the left. Bolden, 13 catches last week. None tonight. That's Bolden in motion to Williams' side. And Kaepernick looking that way. And now he's going to start to take off and throw it incomplete. Intended for Gore down the left sideline. Chased by K.J. Wright, and it's fourth down. Well, the 49ers just gave away a first down. I mean, I don't think there's any question that Kaepernick's going to run for that first down. He got, was under some pursuit, but he's going to outrun this defender to the corner here. I think it was Bobby Wagner. I'm not real sure. You've got to take your chances there, at least picking that up. So they're starting to see him loosen up with Kaepernick a little bit. They could have used one more. Lee's fourth punt is a short punt, calling for a fair catch and making it his tape at the 29. Three and a half to go in the half. Five to nothing, Seahawks. Justin Smith from Missouri. What a fun fuck to him. What a character he is. Great, great fun. It really is. I love the story he said. You know, I used to be a defensive end, then I... Started eating a little bit, then uh, went over 290. They put me a defensive tackle. Started eating a little more, and he said, if they move me to nose tackle, I'm retiring. <laughs> That's it. He said, I'm about a cheeseburger away now.
We had him last night, so you know we're looking at the Wikipedia page for him. Hey, you want a golf course in Missouri? <laughs> no. Your favorite meal is sushi? No. Your dog's names are this and that? No. <laughs> <laughs> All you need to know. <laughs> Uh, you kept firing beautiful. them out there, though, man. Uh, I you love took it. your shot. Uh, that was funny. Got to get it right. <laughs> From the 29-yard line, Robert Turbin is the running back. Off the play fake, and that buys all the time he needs, but the secondary does its work, and then Wilson slides to a hole after an 11-yard pickup. First down. One of the things that you'll see from the 49ers is they expand their zone. They got fooled a little bit here on the play fake, but they play as deep after they recognize passes just about anybody in football. And so two things are going to come out of that. A lot of check downs, and Russell Wilson is going to have a chance to run tonight. And it was a very quick huddle to try to catch the 49ers in their own huddle. Out of position, and Lynch picks up a yard. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Al, you noted that Russell Okun is back on the Seattle sidelines after x-rays on that left foot. There is no update. He's still questionable. I can tell you he has not got a helmet anywhere near him, and mm. he is still pretty gimpy limping around down here, Al. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. We saw him look like he was still in a little bit of pain, and that helmet's not there. That means nobody's going to, at least for this half, put him back in the game. Second down and nine from the 40. Whoa. Out of the pitch. Oh, boy. Lynch is able to take the handoff and hold on to it. That's all you have to do at that point. Anything but a fumble, third and eight. Pretty classic matchup at the end of that play. Patrick Willis squared up against Marshawn Lynch, and Lynch may have gotten the worst of it. Two-minute warning. Five to nothing. Seahawks. The Toyota halftime coming up. Peyton beats Eli as Denver knocks off the Giants. Aaron Rodgers had a huge day against the Redskins. Bob and Hines will weigh in as well on the first half on the Toyota halftime. Third down and eight from the 41 with two minutes to go in the half. Wilson sliding left, open man. Hits Rice for a first down, and Reed is shaken up. Eric Reed, and flags come in there. there four flags come in simultaneously. A third down and eight. Rice is over in the middle, and then Reed really pays the price after Rice's first catch of the game. And four flags came in from every angle. Did he spin that ball at the end? All right, there's a hit. You get up, and if you spin the ball in the face of the defender now, that is taunting. I don't know if that's what happened or not. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike contact, sure. number 18, for spinning the ball at a defender. The down will count. It will be first down after enforcing a 15-yard penalty. Al, the interesting thing is, is that he did this about two times, maybe three times a week ago. And I remember watching the tape going, he better watch that because that's a foul. Last week, he didn't do it right in the face of the defender. This week, he does, and he gets called. Yep, and they made that very clear when they changed the rule. I'm really surprised the Seahawks coaching staff didn't warn him about it last week it happened multiple times comes right back here in this one and now they pay the price for it and 49ers paid a heavy price for that one as well meanwhile reed right now all the attention is on the number one draft choice out of lsu who makes the hit and then he goes down mm. yeah. reed did a good job trying to get his head out of there he took it off to the side but still took a pretty major lick to the side of the helmet And he is already a vital part of the San Francisco defense. They drafted him, let Deshaun Goldson leave for Tampa Bay. And in situations like this, you, all you can do is just hope that it's so much better than it looks. I mean, those of you who may have seen San Diego, Philadelphia, Malcolm Floyd was on the field for about 10 minutes, and you think, oh, my God. And the next thing you know, I believe he flew back with the team and appears to be... Okay. 
So that's all you're hopeful in a situation like this. It's one of the things, and I, there are so many positives about the helmet-to-helmet -helmet rule and the contact. Sometimes I do worry, though, that defenders find themselves having to put their head in an awkward position trying to avoid a penalty, and sometimes by doing that, you put yourself in a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there's no perfect rule. There's no perfect situation. Everybody's trying to err on the side of safety and Goodness knows they've done all they can. Yeah. This is very much the protocol now. They'll, if somebody has a concussion-like hit, they'll have them lie down for a period of time, talk to them. Once they get to that point, they have them sit up for at least a minute. It, the high school coaches would know exactly what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. This sure. is now how you're supposed to do this. Now they'll see how he does. Is he lightheaded? Talk to him again. It's always great to see him at least sit up. Uh, it's come a long way. Football over the last, I guess, 20 years or so. Reed will be assisted off the field. Remember Dwight Stevenson, the great center from Miami. One night got hurt in a Monday night game in Miami. And they put him on a cart that was almost too small to handle him. Got him up, got him off. Oh, oh boy. That's some way to end a career. But you like to see a little smile there too, don't yeah, you? Sure. You know, it, it means that you have, if you can recognize humor. I took a hit one time in my career. I went off to the sideline, and I can remember thinking. I finally looked up at the clock, and there was it was the first play of the game. I got hit on. Looked up at the clock, 13:24 to go in the second quarter. Remembered nothing for an entire quarter. So they will give him the full check over here. Remember what happened half an hour ago? Not a clue. <laughs> Explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> Craig Dahl comes in to replace Reed. The ball's at the 39 on first down after that penalty. And Wilson around the corner skirts the sideline and is able to get out of bounds after he picks up the first down. Know exactly where that market was. Put the ball outside across what he perceived as the line and picks up the first. Namdi Asamoah is going to come on a corner blitz right into where Russell Wilson's going to go. But he also has Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson just too fast to beat him around the corner. This is a tough matchup. When they don't give McQuiston a little help out there, I think I'd scramble right too. 11-yard gain for Wilson. First down right at the 50-yard line. Get the ball off to Robert Turbin. And the backup back is taken down by Dole, but not until he picks up the first down. That's a gain of 24 to the 26-yard line. Maude Brooks has been so stout on the edge. This time, Bruno Giacomini right here is going to turn him out. And Penalty. that's really the key Replay. block. Good blocks Ooh, on the outside by the wide receivers, too. And the flag is going to bring it back. And there's Reed. They're going to take him back to the locker room. He had a flag come in, which the crowd did not see and now Parry will take the ball back to the 40 yard line we never got the call hey, ball back at the 40 yard line trying to get whatever the call was for you hold by Bruno Giacomini and now this is Turbin to the 43 yard line so that negated what would have been a first down of the 26 Giacomini is the guy who gets penalized a lot he had 12 last year always up among the league leaders in the category you don't want to be among the league leaders in he's known as the mauler up there the guy that brings the physical presence sort of the the tough guy of the bunch and got caught there hey, Giacomini with 21 since 2011 a lot of penalties on this drive and Seattle's paid the penalty price tonight as Turbin only picks up a couple. I tell you, Russell Wilson, if he pulls that ball out and takes it around the edge, I'm going to guess the coaches upstairs are going to say, hey, Russell, let's run this one more time here and make sure you read this in right here. 
He starts coming down here too hard. Let's go. He had the whole side of the field to take off. So they were driving, and now all of a sudden they're going to run the clock out for the most part. Third and 13, at least leave San Francisco no time on the other side. And the 49ers the now second. are going to take a timeout. And we go to Michelle again. Well, guys, Eric Reed has been taken to the locker room for further evaluation for concussion sim symptoms. I can tell you that the equipment manager asked the medical staff if he should put his helmet in the big trunk as if it's being put away for the night. And the trainer said yes. So that helmet's been put away. Eric Reed back to the locker room being evaluated. All right. Thank you, Michelle. And that means Dahl, who they picked up in free agency, former Ram. We'll be seeing a lot of action for the rest of the night. It's an interesting timeout for San Francisco there because it looked like the Seahawks were going to run this thing out. They're in great field position. I think I take a shot to get some kind of a completion 10, 15 yards down the field, pick this thing up, and you're in field goal range. Depends on how much you trust Russell Wilson, and I think that's a pretty high level at this point in his career. Well, when San Francisco saw that Seattle was letting the clock run down is when they took the timeout. And Wilson will get sacked by Alden Smith at the 44-yard line. He had more than half of the team's sacks last year. Smith wound up with one and a half in the opener. Has two tonight. Can't even double-team the guy. They got two guys on. She might as well take a shot at it. Alden Smith may have taken one on the hip there. He kind of... Oh, what a player he's turned into, though, huh? Third year in the league. Last year, 19 and a half sacks. And might have gone after Strahan's record, but he was hurt toward the end of the season. And he also lost Justin Smith, his partner in crime, on the other side. Three and a half sacks already in just a game and a half. Put the rush on. And the 49ers is going to let the... Punt with a flag coming down. A flag comes down from yeah, the near it. side. And that's going to be the end of the half, barring a resumption of play because of the penalty. That's good, John Parry's call. He says, hold everything. Because if it's against Seattle, they make him punt again. Well, you know what's interesting with this now is if it's against San Francisco, they line up and try a Hail Mary at this point and don't have to punt. During the kick, holding, return team, number 26. So an offensive foul. Kick. This is the end of the first half. All right. End of the half that included a one-hour weather delay. Seahawks will get the second half kickoff. Five-nothing is our halftime score. Here to half time next. And we're back in Seattle where the Seahawks lead San Francisco at the half by a score of 5 nothing, a half that was delayed for an hour because of lightning. So a long first half. We didn't know whether we were going to see a lot of offense or a lot of defense tonight. The battle of the read option quarterbacks, your take. Well, you know, the read option has really been the interesting part of this game, and I'm not sure everybody understands that. So how about a little Burger King inside edge, and we'll try and explain this a bit. And really what it does is it sort of pressures a fourth area of the defense. Well, of course, we all know that they can go straight ahead with the dives and that got to worry about the bootleg off the backside. But now this read option forces that guy to decide on the end of the line of scrimmage because the quarterback can keep it and run it out around the edge. So the decisions of the defense now really comes down to which edge do you protect? And sometimes you protect the edges so much that the inside runs end up working. So there you go, the little Burger King inside edge on the read option. And we'll see what the adjustments are as we start the second half from Century Link Field. Crowd decimal level triple digits as always. Look right there at Russell Wilson and the read option tonight. 49ers to kick off. First time we've seen Phil Dawson. Their new place kicker who replaces David Akers. Brown. And he starts the second half with a touchback. And let's get an update from Michelle. 
Well, I just spoke with Pete Carroll. He tells me he doesn't expect Russell Okun to be back, but he likes his team's resiliency, the way they've been tough through this game. He thinks they've responded to everything well. He said, I love the way the night is going. He thinks his team has overcome what he described as some big calls by the officials. Meanwhile, Jim Harbaugh was as calm and unfazed in spite of having no points on the board. He said his team needs to string some productive plays together and stay poised. He said it's a one-possession game. They'll do it without Eric Reed. He's out with a concussion, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. And that's a great euphemism. It was. Big that's a big I was thinking calls, too. right? Otherwise, there's a big fine. Here is Marshawn Lynch. He picks up about three. So pretty ugly, all things considered, especially offensively. And there it is. Seattle with twice as much yardage. 109 on the ground and the 49ers limited to 62 total yards and the turnover San Fran 2 and Seattle 1 and San Fran with the really expensive one too because in the end zone they would have at least gotten three points out of that deal but so far in this game five sacks and five points so clearly the defense dominating Wilson is 2 of 10 for 48 yards Lynch on the inside, good, good run, first down. Takes the ball to the Seattle 31. Alden Smith, who looked like he was shaken up at the end of the first half, makes the tackle. It's just a matter of time now. Watch the space again if Russell Wilson keeps this ball. The end is crashing down, but there has really been some wide open runs on the outside. I know they're trying to protect Russell Wilson as well, but Sooner or later, you're going to see him pull that thing down and go for a big run. 15 carries for 77 yards for Lynch. Derek Coleman. That's the word from Wilson. Coleman's, Coleman's a very interesting character here. He is legally deaf, and you saw him just before that play go up, and he almost has to read the lips of Wilson. It's a fascinating story. Second year man out of UCLA. Yeah, he does. And you saw that time Russell Wilson turned around and mouthed the audible to him. There he is. Mm -hmm. Turn around, tell everybody else. Now Coleman says, okay. And he does it in a very enunciated sort of way. Coleman got it, made a nice lead block. Second and eight. Coleman wears hearing aids in both ears. And Lynch to the outside, and they string him out, and he's going to come back the other way. But the 49ers are able to seal the backside as well. Alden Smith makes the tackle. The 49, 49ers play that edge as hard as anybody. That time Ahmad Brooks just out on the slot came slamming down into the fullback, Derek Coleman, from out here. And they are just not going to allow that stretch play to stretch them out. They want to, if that thing goes all the way to the boundary, that gives Marshawn Lynch too many cutback lanes, and they're going to take their chances right at the point of attack. Now the empty backfield on third down and 12. And Wilson escaping, throwing on the run, deep downfield, has his man Doug Baldwin all the way to the 20-yard line. Russell Wilson moving forward, had to be careful not to cross the line of scrimmage, and that's 51 yards. They keep trying to loop Alden Smith around and do this. He just misses this time. But this is part of the brilliance of Russell Wilson. He doesn't look to run. You can see he got very close to the line of scrimmage there, but kept his eyes down the field. And for Doug Baldwin, no one's happier than he is. He is an old Jim Harbaugh guy, too, and very competitive kid. Richard Sherman both together at Stanford when Harbaugh was there. Turbin is the back. And he takes the inside hand off, and that's another big run as Turbin sets up a first and goal at the eight-yard line. J.R. Sleazy pulled and led the way. Well, we talked about the fact that if Winston had to go to tackle, one of the benefits may be that James Carpenter, former number one draft pick, who held a little bit there too, but he is a big, powerful guy, and I threw out the theory, you guys might be better off with him in there in this game against Justin Smith and Alden Smith, just play a little power football, and at least so far, he's done pretty well. Alden Smith is out, he's on the bench at the moment, first and goal from the seven yard line, and Lynch can't go anywhere, Ahmad Brooks 55 is the first guy there, 
So second and goal after a loss of four back to the 11 and Smith comes back in. Well, Ahmad Brooks doesn't get a lot of credit on this team. Everybody on this defense is a big name guy and Bowman and Willis and Alden Smith 19 and a half sacks. Brooks only had, I think he was second on the team with like six and a half sacks, something like that a season ago. But he is the guy in the run game. You'll see that Seattle has been playing tight ends or two tight ends to his side all night trying to block him, and so far it hasn't worked out too well. Second down and goal. Golden Tate is now in the tailback spot. And Wilson's going to go down to the 19-yard line, and that's Brooks having some series. Flag is there. He may have gotten a face mask. So there was going to be some series. Well, and he didn't even need it. No. He was just going down on his own. Finally, an expensive penalty flips the other way on the 49ers. First and foul, face mask, number 55. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Not often you get a free shot at the quarterback. And here, once you grab it and turn that helmet, just hitting the face mask isn't enough. And Jim Harbaugh just can't believe it. Mm. Would have been third and goal from back at the 19. Instead, it's a first down again, first and goal. With the ball at the nine. Cut. 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 Kellen Davis signed because of an injury to Luke Wilson. They only had two tight ends on the team, and Luke Wilson has an injured oblique muscle, and they were really afraid that if he re-injured that, they wouldn't have be able to run their offense, where it's just a lot of two tight end sort of stuff. So they signed Kellen Davis to kind of shore that up. Wilson active tonight. He's seen some action. 9.20 to go in the third, and Wilson's going to take a timeout. To a sputtering end to this drive. Timeout, Seattle. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Burger King, where taste is king. By Nissan, innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation that excites. By Verizon, never be without football with NFL Mobile. And by Frostbrew Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Here's Pete Carroll, Seahawks facility with both indoor and Outdoor fields. He's giving us access to uh, some great still shots. Preparing for Sunday night football. First and goal from the 14 after the penalty. And Wilson in the pocket, slings one incomplete. Sidney Rice couldn't hang on. It was second down and goal. Well, they got the matchup that they wanted without question, and that's a great throw. This is just a drop. Sidney Rice. Of course, had that great year with the Vikings. Has had some injury problems the last couple of years. Pretty tough catch. Got to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. The thing comes in there so fast after you make that cut. A little more on the body helps. Second and goal. Lynch to the inside. Lynch inside the five. Touchdown, Seahawks. And beast mode tonight. 19 carries, 85 yards, and the game's first touchdown. I tell you, James Carpenter's having a nice game right here. Max Unger with a good block as well. Carpenter just one on one inside. I mean, there is nothing fancy about that. They are just opening holes, and right now the 49ers are staying in that two safety look. No matter what Lynch does, they refuse to bring the help down, but they are beginning to lose the battle now in the seven-man front. That's the point off the foot of Hauschka. With 9-12 remaining in the third quarter. Finally get a touchdown. And Seattle leads 12 to nothing. And the uh, Tonight Show. This week, some of the guests will include Christina Aguilera and Jimmy Fallon will be taking over in 2014. On the show this week, 
Seattle on this Sunday night. 12 to nothing. Hawks on top. House going to kick off. Parrish Cox. Back to receive it. From three yards deep. Parrish Cox will set him up at the 27 yard line. Richard Sherman went to Stanford. Very interesting guy. Bob Costas had a chance to talk to him on football night tonight. Grew up in Compton. Credits his dad with his work. I think his father for years has driven a garbage truck. Still does. Mother is a welfare worker. Very interesting background. Fascinating guy. Not very fascinating for Anquan Bolden. He's been shut out so far, and Richard Sherman's the reason why. Bolden, 13 catches last week. And look out as Kaepernick gets hit after he throws it in the direction of Miller, and it's incomplete. And down goes Colin in the backfield. Michael Bennett came in. Boy, Michael Bennett has been a four since he's gotten back in the lineup, dealing with some injuries of his own but he is just too quick for Anthony Davis off the edge and remember they still don't have their best pass rusher back yet and Chris Clemens they'll get him soon this team is going to be very tough when they get all their weapons Bruce Irvin not there either 49ers are averaging a little more than two yards a play 62 total yards 29 plays Kaepernick flushed out again Looking downfield, pass is caught up at the 37-yard line by Miller, and Miller will pick up a first down. Well, now we're starting to see Colin Kaepernick. He knows he's got to take this game in his own hands. I know he's only a third-year guy, but he's a superstar right now. And sometimes you're playing in one of these kind of games, and as a quarterback, you just have to take over. Do it all. From the 43, no running game at all tonight for the 49ers. That's as close as they've come to getting something to the 48-yard line. So far tonight, Richard Sherman has won this battle. There's been a couple of times he's had such a good jam off the line of scrimmage. I couldn't tell if Bolton was blocking him or not. You've got to think that if you're going to play against Richard Sherman, one of the top cover guys, eight interceptions last year, tied for second in the league. And Antoine Bolton's not a fast speed guy, he's a power guy. So go some bunch formations, do some things to get him a release, and then let him go to work. Second and five. Got a flag down. That was Adam Schneider who went into the backfield and was going in motion. Offensive lineman. Ball start. Number 77. Offense. Right here in front of him. I think he called the false start on Yapati. Yep. 49ers love to do a lot of shifting in motion, and that time they were all over the place. Yeah, well, the hard part is the shifting in motion is a communication, an additive. You know, it's one more thing, and it's difficult to do, especially when this crowd's like this. Yep. Halfway through the third quarter. There's the bunch formation we were talking about at the bottom. Three men to the left, Kaepernick sliding away, gets around the corner, and Colin Kaepernick stays in bounds and takes it all the way to the 29-yard line. Great secondary coverage again by Seattle, but that's why Kaepernick is Kaepernick, 28 yards on the ground. And that's the key for him. When he takes over a game, he is capable of doing this on a regular basis. He's the fastest guy out there on the field. He's faster than San Francisco's wide receivers. And when he gets on the edge against the man coverage of Seattle, there are going to be wide open lanes because they're turned around chasing guys down the field. Fast and 6'4", 230 is the 49er quarterback. Good play fake. Pass, open man, caught. That is Vance McDonald. Breaks the tackle, takes it to the 10-yard line. Their number two draft choice, rookie out of Rice, Vance McDonald. Well, that time they had a formation that helped them out. They go unbalanced line over here to the right-hand side. Very much a run formation. Go play action off of it. And Richard Sherman that time got run over by Vance McDonald. 
throws the ball at the 10, thus it's first and goal. And Frank Gore fighting his way, turning the, what would have been a one-yard gain into about two and a half to three. Second and goal. That Seattle defensive coordinator has done such a massive job with this year that Dan Quinn had been here, went to Florida for a couple of years, and then when Gus Bradley, last year's defensive coordinator, got the Jacksonville head job, Quinn came back. Well, he's done a fantastic job here. Recognize that guy, oh, don't you? Oh, yeah. Ken Norton, one-time 49er, now, of course, on Carroll's staff with the enemy. Second down and goal. Inside give. Shoving his way to the three goes Frank Gore, who's been bottled up all night. That's Gore's ninth carry, 16 yards total. Well, this is as basic as it gets down here. Now they're starting to pull Alex Boone, pull him Vernon Davis around. Now try and communicate a play. Look at him. They're having to crawl inside the helmet of Colin Kaepernick to just hear what he's saying down here in this end zone. Third and goal. Play clock already in single digits. Spread it out. That's a quarterback draw here. To the outside. Takes a toss and it's taken out of bounds at the three-yard line. It's fourth and goal. A.J. Wright. And again, that Seattle coverage was terrific. Yeah, and once you get down inside the red zone, a lot of times even a man coverage team will end up dropping back into zones because you have essentially seven guys now covering five yards of turf. You know, there's not a lot of room to work. So you're hoping for some inside action. They tried a little pick play. They thought they thought they'd get man coverage. Gore was going to pick the inside receiver. It ended up being his own. It didn't work. Bill Dawson, 15th year. All the prior ones with Cleveland, 21-yard field goal attempt is good. They the 49ers with 420 left in the third to get on the board. Seattle by nine. All right, Saturday, the Fighting Irish are back at home taking on Michigan State. The rivalry extends more than a century back. It's Saturday, it's 3.30 Eastern time, it's NBC. Notre Dame football. Look at both stadiums, the Seahawks and the Mariners. Back-to-back -back stadiums, the Ferris wheel on the waterfront in this most beautiful city. Did you go on the Ferris wheel? You were talking no, about No, I didn't. Uh, I'm trying to get moved to... <laughs> Come back in on, come back in on flux with it. <laughs> and a touchback here. Seattle will take over the 20 with 420 to go on the third. 12-3 Seahawks. Interesting to note the average salary, salary cap number, the average quarterback in the league, 8.14 million. Now you go to Kaepernick, 1.4 million, fourth lowest. The lowest is Russell Wilson at 686. Third round draft choice was he. Kaepernick was a backup. Uh, those numbers will change shortly. These two guys have really done great work. John Schneider and Seattle, Trent Walkey, the GMs, the respective GMs, rebuilding their teams, restructuring their teams. I mean, Seattle three years ago, so so. You know, not much doing either way, very average. The 49ers went through eight consecutive seasons without being above 500, and then Harbaugh comes in. Game of four as Lynch takes the ball to the 24. Yes, sir. Know, and it's a great point because, let's face it, the reason that Anquan Bolden is here is because Colin Kaepernick is not eating up salary cap room. They had to pay Joe Flacco, justifiably so. He was absolutely brilliant during the playoffs. And next year they have to play Kaepernick. But for right now, this is a very deep football team in San Francisco and in Seattle. And I think late in the year it's going to really show up. And that's why in power polls, these teams are either ranked 1-2 or among the top five along with Denver. And Denver's done nothing to uh, remove themselves from Super Bowl consideration. But and Seattle able, in the, in the offseason, Percy Harvin got hurt. So they expect him back. They hope to have him back uh, later in the year. The great wide out and pick returner Averill and Bennett come in as defensive ends and also Chris Clemens has been hurt he's terrific they've got Bruce Urban who is suspended so as the season goes along they'll be even deeper this pass rush is going to be a nightmare here in about a month's time 
third and four from the 26. And Wilson's going to take off, and then he shovels the ball to Golden Tate. And Tate to the 48-yard line. So Russell Wilson moving forward for a 27-yard gain, coming out of the pocket and coming close to the line of scrimmage. Well, let's remember the rule now. As long as any part of his body is either on or behind that red line, he's safe. Yep. That's not even close. Yep. But don't you love watching Russell Wilson? We saw him in the Pro Bowl this past year, and I can remember thinking, this kid's the best player on the field. You know, he, he, you look at him and you think, oh, well, you know, he's not that big, and he's not After this, and he's not that. the and during the run, holding number 18, 10-yard oh. penalty. And then on the outside, it's Rice. That's the second big penalty on Sidney Rice tonight. But I think it'll still be a first down because the hold took place well downfield. Spot foul, right. And they bring it back to the 35, but it is a first down. Here's Rice downfield against Rodgers. There's the hold right there. It's after Tate had moved the stick. So it's in the spot of the foul on that foul. And Wilson to the outside and gets taken down as Bowman rides him out of bounds after a gain of a couple. Holy cow, Navarro Bowman can run. <laughs> I mean, there are many guys, watch this, coming right out here. Uh, you know, Russell Wilson even had a head start on him. A little, a little bump in the road there is trying to ground Baldwin's block. It's kind of interesting. He pulled it down on the read option, going to the three-receiver side, where really where it's been open has been more to the tight side with the end crashing down. Second and eight. Fake to Lynch. Look at that protection. Deep downfield. There's the flag for interference. Golden Tate gets locked up with Nandi Asamoa. Former Raider, former Eagle, who comes over as the guy who's part of the nickel package gets flagged. Well, they really went after Nandi Asamoa a week ago. The Green Bay Packers did, and now they come right back in the key situation. Remember, the receiver has every right Pass to appearance come back defense. to the ball. Contact without playing the ball. Automatic first down. This is top. much more of Golden Tate creating the contact, going for the ball, than it is Asamoah sort of initiating it. You'll see he kind of jumps back through him, and that's what caused Asamoah to grab him. Good play by Golden Tate. That's a 40-yard penalty. The team inside, they're not going to let Alden Smith beat him as easily anymore. From the 24. And a couple of playoff flag down again here. Holding offense, number 60, 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. Center Max Unger. With your man who played for Chip Kelly at Oregon. Well, we talked about it before. I guarantee he grabbed the jersey because on that inside play, you're going to see <laughs> the officials, they don't see everything, but if you grab and tug a jersey, let's see. Right over here, there it is. They don't miss that. But the mark is Dobbs, so it's first down and 20. Oh, 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 what is it? And 34. happening there. Well, I started to say, you talk about a, a change of fortune. I mean, Mamdi Asamoah, a couple of years ago, is the most highly sought free agent in the NFL. Everybody's going after him. And then Philadelphia winds up with him, and all of a sudden, his career arc goes almost straight down and winds up signing with the 49ers for not a heck of a lot of money. And then it's a flag for the 40-yard penalty. Yeah, and right now, Seattle has sort of pushed themselves out of field goal range. So they need to do a little work here. Three points and these situations get bigger and bigger as we head towards the end of the third quarter. A minute to go in the quarter. And second and 23. Wilson underneath and Lynch will get Bottled up right away. Asamoah, the first guy there. 
And then it's going to be third down in a mile. Well, Patrick Willis is the guy that, for a big linebacker, the reason he makes all pro every year is that he can cover running backs and tight ends coming out of the backfield, and he does not miss tackles. Nice play by Namdi Asamoah coming up with the first hit. It was interesting talking to Patrick Willis about trying to tackle Marshawn Lynch, wasn't it? He was like, man, you better, you better bring it. It's not like you stick out an arm or you try and body block him down. You better hit him hard and wrap him up. You want to get that guy down. Third and 28. Swung over the middle, and that's caught. That's going to put him in field goal range as Zach Miller makes the catch, and another flag is down with two seconds left in the quarter. And the penalty is going to be against San Francisco. So after a third and 28, it's going to be a first down. Number 99, defense, after the play was over, contact to the helmet. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So a third and 28 becomes a first down on the personal foul on Alden Smith. Well, Giacomini right there. There you go. Has a way of irritating guys. <laughs> He's not the first one. And he who punches last usually gets caught in this league. One of those nasty street guys. And Smith pays the price. And that is a huge price. It's the end of the third quarter. Seattle leading 12-3. Sunday night football resumes after these messages. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Geico as you look at the famed uh, Space Needle, the centerpiece of uh, the World's Fair about a half century ago in Seattle. Al Michaels with Chris Collinsworth and Michelle Defoya, and there was Jim Harbaugh. And you, well, you only saw it was a one-syllable. No, I, I heard it. he said son of a coach. Yep. That's what he said. You know, he's the son of a coach. He and John, and you know, he just covered it up accidentally there at the end. Yep, that was after the Alden Smith personal foul, which has put Seattle at the 14-yard line with a first down. Looks to the outside. No, that's a great play there. That's Alden Smith. The reason they're in this predicament to begin with, and he's able to crash through and stop him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. Paul McQuiston out there playing tackle, and even on the run game now, he's having to deal with this monster. It's amazing. People don't really think about Alden Smith as being a run player, but they really now have almost started running, trying to run at him a little more because he's so fast chasing down plays from the backside. And, the result has been that Alden Smith's gotten a heck of a lot better playing the runs coming at him. He's a guy that, uh, well, you think pass rusher, but he's become a pretty complete player over there. Momentary stoppage there. McDonald has to come off. He's been in and out. He got hurt earlier. He was out. Now he's back out again. It's second down and 13. From the 16-yard line. And Wilson's going to take it around the left side. And pick up about nine yards as he steps out of bounds at the seven yard line well i've been waiting all night for this one here because this is back to the short side now and alden smith has been crashing down on these and there's just nobody left out there that's what the read option is all about and it's the first time they've gone back into the short side he tried it once to the wide side and that didn't work but alden smith you can't get greedy on that read option they have to pay a price Lucky that's all it was. Third down and four. Blitz coming. Got the run. And Lynch gets open and he will walk into the end zone. Craig Gall came in. The 49ers who blitz less than any team in the league decide to call one on the third and four and get burned. I'm going to tell you, that's great coaching right there. Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, he sees this blitz coming, so now instead of coming up and blocking, he just releases that back. That's called a scat protection, basically where they say, if that guy comes, don't block him, because he's also the guy that would have to cover you in man coverage. Brilliantly done, something you practice all the time, executed perfectly that time by Seattle. The Alden Smith penalty turns out to be huge at this point in the game. Extra point by Hauska is good. 13-44 to go, and the Seahawks lead by 16 in Seattle.
Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. But Samsung Galaxy S4, the next big thing is here. By Monday, we're thinking new possibilities. And by World War Z Unrated Cut, Tuesday on Blu-ray Combo Pack. See during the week, earlier tonight, Kaepernick and Wilson did a commercial for EA Sports talking about losers shaving an eyebrow, but they'll only do it virtually, we think. Well, the Seahawks in command right now, it's still... A two-possession deficit for the 49ers, but those two possessions would mean two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. And taking a knee is Paris Cox in the end zone. So Kaepernick begins his uphill battle in Seattle from the 20. Week three of the season. Next week, we go to Pittsburgh. The Chicago Bears 2-0. The Steelers play tomorrow night. They're on one football night. Once everything started at 7 o'clock Eastern time. From Pittsburgh, it's the Bears and the Steelers on Sunday night football. Crowd roaring. Kaepernick retreating. Dumps it off underneath. And that's caught by Gore, the safety valve. And it's a gain of 14. Tackled by Michael Morgan and another penalty flag here. We've had a ton of them tonight. Or was not happy after that hit. I'll tell you, Frank Gore running the ball tonight has done nothing. And really, the first two games in a row now has done very little running the ball. And San Francisco is a run-first team. Nine carries, 16 yards. The 49ers are backing up right now. John Parry gets the word. Back to the play, personal foul. Offense from Brady Nine. Vance McDonald. The rookie tight end. They have so many fouls so far away from the ball. It's it's been ridiculous tonight. There it is, the second punch again. KJ Wright kind of goes to his face mask. You retaliate, and they always catch him, you know. This has been a high level of frustration tonight for the 49ers, and they've paid a big price for silly mistakes. I mean, they just really have. Ten penalties, 105 total penalty Correction yards. Correction penalty enforcement. The offense have gained a first down. Therefore, it will be first and ten, San Francisco, since they had gained the first down. But it still costs them 15 yards. Dead ball foul, so they picked up the first down. Dead ball foul, which 49ers learned a lot about last week in the Green Bay game as well. Oh, yeah. Clay Matthews hitting Capper to get a bounce, and then Staley coming in and getting a flag, even though the league said he shouldn't have been flagged. From the 19-yard line, Kaepernick's going to air it out deep, and it's going to be picked off at the 50-yard line by Richard Sherman. Sherman. Out of bounds at the 25. Sherman has covered Bolden so much of the night. That time locked up on Vernon Davis. And that's a pretty happy 60-second birthday present for his head coach. There aren't many corners in the league. They're going to be able to out-muscle Vernon Davis for the ball. Sherman had him all the way. And let's face it, Richard Sherman does not like Jim Harbaugh. He thinks he's a big reason why he didn't go higher in the draft. He was told that Harbaugh had negative things to say about him to scouts that came over, and he said, tonight, folks, if I look over at the 49ers sideline, I am not looking at one of the players. And on top of it all, you saw Davis reach for his hamstring at the end of the play. First down from the 25-yard line. Hands the ball to Lynch. Marshawn Lynch closing in on the century mark. 24 carries, 87 yards for the Beast. Well, that Richard Sherman's a story, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, a very bright guy. It was no accident that he got into Stanford. His parents forced him to study all the time. If he didn't make A's, he didn't get to play sports. 
and his mother was so kind to everybody in the neighborhood even the gang members refused to let Sherman and his brothers hang out with him he said no out of respect to your mother go away you go back and study ends up turning out pretty darn well old mom done good dad as well very Hard bright worker. very bright and a great sense of humor as well to the 18 yard line goes Marshawn Lynch setting up a third and short Brooks makes the tackle on the play and go figure with Bolden 13 catches last week over 200 yards and tonight zilch there was a lot of zone coverage a week ago and not that Seattle hasn't played zone they have out here but what makes this defense great is their secondary and their secondary's ability to play man-to-man -man coverage and tonight they have won the battle in a huge way in a huge way against these 49ers receivers. Third and four. Blitz coming here. Justin Smith chases him out of the pocket. Throws on the run and the pass from the 5'10 and 5'8 Wilson is incomplete. It's just the, the very official height. 5'10 and 5'8. I tell you, I think the, the real untold story of these two quarterbacks are how smart they are. You know, young quarterbacks that have the ability to come in and pick up the offense as quickly as these two guys have, to make the kind of decisions on the fly that these guys have done has a lot to do with the reason that they've achieved the status they have. And you put RG3 in that mix, too. They all no run the same stuff. They're all very highly intelligent cats. 37-yard field goal attempt is good by Hauska. Another turnover, another three points, 22 to 3. Not too late to play NFL.com fantasy football. Get free mobile apps and exclusive instant highlights. Sign up for free at NFL.com slash fantasy. Space Needle Seattle on the Sunday night where we had a one hour weather delay late in the first quarter. We thought maybe San Francisco would benefit from it, but look at the score 22 to 3. Seattle with 11 and a half to go. What a job defensively for Seattle tonight. They've gotten some big performances out of some new guys too. Michael Bennett, Cliff Abel, both have had big games here. Kyle Williams takes the knee. 49ers with the ball, 22 to 3. Seattle. They waited all day and through an hour delay and biggest crowd ever in this ballpark, 68,338. Still roaring. Team up by 19. Kaepernick, five wide. Over the middle, it's caught at the 26-yard line and Kyle Williams takes it out to the 31 where he's tackled by Earl Thomas. Now those pass rushers are going to get their opportunity. The 49ers starting to spread it out now, try and create some one-on-one -on -one matchups so they can throw the football. Didn't get forward progress beyond the 30, so it's second down in inches, and that's knocked away by Walter Thurman, who earlier had a big deflection that led to an interception intended for Vance McDonald, third and a short one. He's had a fantastic game tonight, Thurman has, and for Colin Kaepernick, his two worst starts of his career both been right here in this building. And he's not the only quarterback that could say that. On Sunday Night Football. Yeah, good point. And Kaepernick going to sneak for a first down. Ooh, very close. Let's see if they give him forward progress. Cam Chancellor is there. All the nose of the ball, if it's on the 30-yard line, and it is, that's a first down. Simple as that. Checking with Michelle. First down. Another starter out for the 49ers. Vernon Davis, as you both suspected, hamstring. He is done for the night. They've got an ice pack on that leg. They worked with him for a little bit, but he's done. All right, thank you, Michelle. And next week they get Indianapolis in San Francisco. Kaepernick going against the grain, throwing it away. Meanwhile, Seattle up here, and another flag is down. 
up at the 36-yard line. We've had 17 accepted penalties in the game for 165 yards. And Byron Maxwell got Prior it. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding, defense, number 31, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. I guess you could call that holding, a little bit of a takedown, holding, whatever you want to call it here. There you go, yes. get out of my face. Yeah, 41, not 31. Byron Maxwell. So first down with 10... 21 left in the fourth. To the outside, Kyle Williams, and he's got... Oh, oh boy, but then breaking through is Richard Sherman. <laughs> Whoa! Thought he was a cover corner. And he is going to be strutting tonight. He is unafraid to say anything. He says, it sharpens my knife, guys. Anytime I get a chance to talk out there, I know I have to back it up. And boy, has he ever tonight. He has been fantastic. From the 45, second and one. And that's caught. That'll be a first down. And that's catch number one, Anquan Bolden. Over 50 minutes into the game, he makes his first catch of the night. No huddle. Kaepernick, can he get away? Yes, he does. And he's going to run for a first down and a few yards more. Kendall Hunter, he'll pave the way with a nice block. First down, San Francisco. I don't think Michael Bennett can believe it. He had him twice. Ran right back to him again. Watch right here. Where he's going to go. He had a leg right here. Missed him. Gets up. Kaepernick runs <laughs> right back to him. Missed him again. Well, if it weren't for Kaepernick, they'd have nothing at all tonight, would they? Hunter block that turned into a somersault. And then crashing through is Schofield into the backfield to take down Hunter for a loss of seven yards. Well, Brian Schofield has got to be wondering what I have to do to get more playing time. He had a sack last week playing that Leo position. And all they do is keep bringing all pros back in front of him. Cliff Averill was signed. He comes back in. Chris Clemens will be back in a week or two. And all Schofield has done has been brilliant when he had a chance. Picked him up on waivers from Arizona, and Kaepernick has to take a timeout before a second and 17. Back at this. Well, if you look at that, the score does make a lot of sense. Frank Gore, less than two yards a carry. Antoine Bolden, one catch just a, a minute or so ago. And only targeted twice tonight. That's the job that Seattle's done on him. Second and 17 after the 49er timeout. <laughs> Deflected, and that's something that rarely happens. Chris Abel is the man who got a hand on it. Last year, Kaepernick playing uh, about half the year, didn't have a pass deflected during the regular season. That was last year. It's pretty amazing to watch this team that has been running up so many points. This can't do anything against this tremendous Seattle defense. Third and 17. Play clock to zero. They got it. We delay a game. Making it third and 22. There's no foul to delay a game. San Francisco had requested a timeout. All right. Before the delay a game penalty. Timeout San Francisco. The team second.
So this is the end of week two as we wind it down. Week three to Pittsburgh next week. The Chicago Bears, 2-0 and against the Steelers. Football night will get it started. And earlier today, the Bears in a wild one. That's for most of that game. 31-30 beating Minnesota with a ton of huge plays. Chicago wins it at the end on a pass from Cutler to Martellus Bennett. Green Bay 1-1 one one with their win. Detroit loses in Arizona. And the Vikings losing a heartbreaker today. Go to 0-2. Martellus Bennett with the game-winning catch there. Michael Bennett with great pressure all night long on Kaepernick. Good night for that fan. Third and 17. Gordon is trying to retain a pulse. Kaepernick going against the grain and incomplete. Kyle Williams closest to it. Fourth down. Well, they're trying everything. They tried a little pick play at the bottom against man coverage is the one place that San Francisco has had some success in the past, but not even tonight. Let's see if we consider any of this illegal contact at the top. What's a new call? Would have been a first down, too. Fourth down. Stepping away. And he's about three yards short of retaining possession. And he has been their running game tonight. 13-yard gain. He's gained 87 yards. And the rest of the team, 13. Well, what do we think right now? I mean, first of all, in Seattle, we all know, this crowd is unbelievable. Huge advantage. I mean, most... People think home field is worth three points most places. I think it's closer to five here. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that one. And it's, but this is a bit unsettling now. This has not been the 49ers that we know these past two weeks. They haven't been able to run the ball. And when they can't run the ball, this is not the same team. It's not the same offense at all. And so there has to be some concerns now about the ability of the receivers to beat one-on-one -on -one coverage and their ability to run the football. From the 26, they can work on the clock right now from the Seahawks. And that's Marshawn Lynch and a flag for change. Holding offense, number 60, 10 yard penalty, first down. Max Unger from a fifth generation Hawaiian family, family on the Big Island ranchers over a century. But you didn't know. Oh, you knew that. Oh, I was in the meeting. <laughs> I heard him tell me all about it. You guys doing that Hawaii bonding thing. But of course. Uh, that's where Al Michaels got his start. <laughs> but really made your career in Cincinnati. Uh, but of course. First and 20, halfway through the fourth quarter. And Lynch. And uh, guess what? Another penalty. 19 accepted penalties for 180 yards collectively tonight. There's something going on basically out of bounds on the far side. And the flag was dropped right on the boundary. Holy offense, number 68. Half the distance, replay, first down. Reno Giacomini. Well, just when Pete Carroll on his birthday would love to see this offense grind out the clock and get the heck out of here. His offense is going backwards, but at least so far what we've seen tonight out of San Francisco, they'll do something, a penalty or a mistake, and, and give them a first down somehow. And that has been the storyline tonight. And despite the fact that really San Francisco got all the breaks from the calls early on, 49ers unable to take advantage. So it's a... Uh, a first and 27 for the first time in my memory. 
from the nine yard line. We've not seen it all. Game of three. The Seahawks, of course, up here in the great Northwest, but they might as well be in the AFC South for the next month. Kind of, kind of crazy the way the schedule works. They'll play the entire AFC South over the next four weeks. Jacksonville here next week, then at Houston, at Indianapolis, and Tennessee comes in here. And one of they have five games at one o'clock starts on the East Coast, right? Yes, they do, which is 10 o'clock body time. And they actually practice that. In training camp, they would have their practices at 10 a.m. because basically their season's going to be decided playing what will amount to a 10 a.m. start on the East Coast five different times. Five of the eight games, and they have a Thursday night or in Arizona on the schedule as well. And that's a tough tackle by Whitner on Zach Miller as Miller gets upended. Six minutes to go. You know, Dante Whitner finally got to the Pro Bowl a season ago, and it's really well-deserved. This guy is one of the tougher, hardest-hitting guys between he and Deshaun Goldson over the past couple years. They have been brutal on receivers. You know, it's... I don't know. I'm not getting into it anymore. I've already made one point tonight on the rules. I'm wait for Wednesdays inside the NFL. All right. Third and 17. And Wilson gets it away to get out of harm's way. Well, if you'd have told me that Russell Okun was going to be out of this game and sort of give Alden Smith a bit of a free run at Russell Wilson, I'm not sure I would have believed the score would be what it is now. Meanwhile, the 49ers with three significant injuries and nose tackle Williams went out early. Reed went out near the half. Vernon Davis with the hamstring. And Okun, the left tackle there, he is with the foot injury. Fourth and 17. Ryan's kick. Fielded at the 24-yard line by Kyle Williams. And there's a flag down, so... We'll see if that good run back will stand. Fifty-eight yard punt. That was a twenty-yard <laughs> return. I guess officials are happy when a lot of flags are being thrown. <laughs> During the kick, holding number twenty of the return team. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First and ten. John Perry getting almost as much face time as the secondary for the Seattle Seahawks, and they have been brilliant. Walter Thurman really has had a fantastic game. I thought that was the play of the game right there, really flipped it around. Earl Thomas, as good a safety in the middle of the field as there is playing right now. And that guy, Richard Sherman, he called it in advance. You know what Muhammad Ali said, he's bragging if you can get it done, and he's gotten it done. And there's Brandon Browner, a rather great defensive back who's been hurt. Wait till they get him back. Just another guy they're missing in that secondary right now. And in that defense. Right up in their face again. Oh. In the traffic, and that's Bobby Wagner, who came out of nowhere last year to earn the middle linebacker job as a rookie. Now second year out of Utah State. And what else? Got another flag. In person a foul against San Francisco. That's where it was June 14th. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 76. After the play was over, half the distance to the goal, the down counts, second down. Anthony Davis. I'll tell you that, Bobby Wagner is a good player, isn't he? Yeah. He was second in the defensive rookie of the year, balloting only to Luke Keekley, and no dishonor in that. Keekley, Keekley was amazing last year. Second and 16. That's caught on the outside by Marlon Moore. Picked him up from Miami as a free agent. A good preseason. This Michael Bennett right here has got some juice to him now. They move him down inside. Spin moves. He has been very consistent with the pressure tonight. He mix in Chris Clemens on the outside when he gets back and Cliff Abel 
I don't know who's going to block these guys. And Kaepernick throws, and it's going to be picked off at the 32-yard line. This is Cam Chancellor to the two. A major beat down. Major. Cam Chancellor right here, but again, it's the coverage of Richard Sherman. Kaepernick's going to try and force this one in, but if he'd have thrown it to the receiver, Sherman would have intercepted this one. Sherman has just been unbelievable tonight. Just go ahead and write him into the Pro Bowl right now. If he plays like this every week, he has been something. Cam Chancellor was a great one, too. I, I love the story on Cam Chancellor. He was going to buy his mom a car. Told her he was over to a friend's house, went over, took her over there. She was so excited to see the car. All the family jumped out of the house. The house was hers, too. It was one of those great moments, and uh, pretty good moment right there for old mom as well. Good guy. Cam Chancellor doesn't get a lot of credit back there, but I tell you, the hit he put on Vernon Davis in this game a year ago, I'll never forget. 6-3, Neither will Davis, first and goal. And Marshawn Lynch will plow his way in for a touchdown. So back-to-back -back blowouts for the Seahawks over their arch rival in this building. So San Francisco turned it over four times. That interception was their third. They have to review every scoring play. Starts to juggle it and then does cross the plane with possession. Touchdown confirmed. Extra point confirmed. 29 to 3, Seattle. There aren't many times that you can say Jim Harbaugh's bunch got beat up. But tonight, these big guys are winning the battle. And if San Francisco cannot stop you from running the ball with seven in the box, they can be vulnerable on the outside. Tonight, just no help. No help at all from their offense. Here's Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, and some good stuff out of all the Seahawks tonight. So the youthful 62 year old Carroll last game against the last four games against the 49ers for Lynch there it is and he's only a couple of yards shy of the century mark tonight and this team I forget the exact stat but over the last two years under Vic Fangio one of the hardest teams in all the NFL to run the ball against and Marshawn Lynch has just worn him out again Happy birthday, Pete. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun on every level. I mean, the game is huge. He and Harbaugh, you know, it's both guys say it's overdone. And hell, in today's world, as we all know, everything is overdone. Yeah, what Harbaugh but, tells us, he says, we'll be, we talk before every game. We talk at every owner's meeting, but I yeah. guess it's good TV. Huh? Yeah, it makes <laughs> a good TV, good yeah. copy, and all the rest. I mean, there's something there, but, you know, at a certain point. He says it's competition. That's right. what he says. It's competition. We both love to win. Harris Cox. After the 20, the ball is out. Seahawks think it was out before he was down, but the officials say new. The ruling on the field is down by contact. No fumble. First and ten. I don't know. San Francisco. Pretty close. They might get another one here. Well, they can challenge. Let's take a look. No knee down, ball out. Yeah, That's a fumble. That's a fumble, and of course they can challenge it. And, <laughs> you know, Pete's going to do that, of course. Oh, uh, let's give the special teams a little love now. Byron Maxwell will collect it, and Carroll will challenge, and uh, we we give it like 99.2 percent that he wins it. Well, and they uh, got the look in the stadium that you don't get when you're on the road.
Watch the knees, and I'll tell you when the ball comes out. Out. No knees down. Well, Pete's going to challenge, and uh, I think he he wouldn't mind another touchdown, even though this one's well in hand. I mean, there's a pouring on factor, but uh, these guys were used to a little pouring <laughs> on <laughs> We've got when a SC of, met Stanford a few years ago. We've got a couple of pouring on stories. That was really one of the beginning moments of this rivalry when Pete thought Jim ran up the score a little bit when he was with Stanford. Gave him the what's your deal. And, uh, well, here's what we're talking about. Fred Gadelli goes into the archives back in 09. That was Harbaugh winning. And what's your deal? One of the things that was said. So handshakes are always interesting with Jim, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they are. Well, you had the that whole Jim Schwartz yeah. thing. Sure. He's a fiery guy. You know, he. You can't help but laugh at him a little bit. I mean, he's so intense all the time. Last night we were in our production meetings, and, and Michelle Tafoy said, okay, if I catch you coming off the you know field for halftime, whatever, he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, what do I do? What, what do you want from After me? What, what do you play, say? The ball was loose prior to the runner being done by Conte. It's first and ten. He's going to blow out all the candles tonight. Five turnovers. But let's say this. In reality, what Seattle has done in this division is held serve at home. You know, and now you go back to San Francisco, and now the pressure is on San Francisco back there. I'd be stunned if these two teams don't both make the playoffs this year. But no question about it, this is a little step. For the Seattle Seahawks, you know, a second beat down here feels pretty good. They will gather again on December the 8th in San Francisco. Robert Turbin stopped at the line of scrimmage as we will tick down under four minutes to go. It's been a rough night, but it has been... For Russell Wilson, just another, another step. This young man, remember last year, I mean, they were so protective of him. They really, they didn't want him to lose a game. They didn't mind losing with him. They didn't want him to be the cause. And then he had that huge game in Chicago, the double comeback, if you will. And from that moment on, they're like, cut him loose. Started from day one. Took him to a win against Washington and almost beat Atlanta in the playoffs. Spencer Weir is the ball carrier. He's going to go to 9-0 and in this stadium. Grew up in Virginia. His father actually played, Russell Wilson's father played in the NFL in preseason with San Diego back in 1980. Actually caught a touchdown pass in a preseason game. His dad, of course, was his hero. An educator, died of diabetes a couple of years ago. His sister is a tremendous high school basketball player. Meanwhile, the 49ers right now, Ray McDonald is the guy who's down, and he's been in and out of the, the game all night long. Well, it's one thing when you get beat, but it's another when you start losing your star players, and Ray McDonald is one of those really unsung heroes on this football team. They do so much along the defensive line. He and Justin Smith and now Glenn Dorsey. They keep those linebackers free. They allow Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman to run sideline to sideline. That's really the essence of this defense. Start losing these guys, and it gets much tougher. Holden Smith, that was a big personal foul on him in a situation where Seattle would have had to punt. The next thing you know, they get a first down and a touchdown. In the ensuing series. Have a look here. Right there he is. See what happens. Yep. Oh, on the back of that knee. Well, you talk to any of these linebackers, though, especially Bowman and Willis, 
about all the all-pro teams they've made and all, all Pro Bowls and all that stuff, and you can't even get the words out of your mouth before they're talking about Dorsey and Ian Williams and Justin Smith and Ray McDonald. That is the design of this defense. Keep those guys clean, let them make the plays, and don't worry about the awards, although Justin Smith's done all right, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. He's the only guy I've ever seen. He's made the all-pro team as defensive end and defensive tackle. That's pretty impressive. He said the other night, the movement and nose tackle, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's the same year. You know, I've, I've seen guys make it, okay, one year they're defensive end, one year they're defensive tackle. He makes it the same year. Third down and seven. Why, nine, wait. goes to Spencer Weir. And two fullbacks in the backfield right now. And that's going to take us uh, almost to the two-minute warning. I think it will. Well, it's been a great night tonight for Seattle and their defense. No question about it. Give some of the big guys up front because Tony McDaniel, Red Bryant, Brandon Meebane, DeAnthony Smith, they shut down the running game. I mean, they just absolutely shut it down. And then that guy took care of everything on the back end. Richard Sherman, as advertised, may be the best in the league right now. He's not afraid to tell you either. He'll be in this business in about 10 years. Maybe two with Michelle after the game. <laughs> <laughs> two minute, two minute warning in Seattle. Old Seahawks. Right after the game, a show on the field with the star of the game, Bob, Tony, and Mike. Wrapping up the day, we'll take a peek ahead to next week's game in Pittsburgh. Recap tonight. Go back to the weather delay. 60 minutes came toward the end of the first quarter, so a one-hour delay. And then Kaepernick tonight, one of his worst nights ever. He hasn't had too many bad ones, but they've both been here. Russell Wilson, meanwhile, those numbers won't uh, be particularly scintillating, but he's getting the job done. Lynch, per usual, major factor. Got the ground game going, 98 yards on the ground, and Seattle on its way to 2-0. It, it probably was Colin Kaepernick's one of his worst game ever, but he was the best offensive player for the 49ers tonight. Right. Think about that. 87 yards on the ground for him. The, the rest of the Move team with 13 net ground yards. And on fourth and two, they're going to pick up the first down, Spencer Ware. And that'll enable Seattle to just run the clock out with a couple of kneel downs. And Ware is going to come hobbling off to the side. Happy birthday, Pete. There you go. Couldn't ask for a better present than that. You know, he's a guy, Al, we were talking about it a little bit before, but... You know, he was in New England and one of those players' coaches. And the theory then was, well, you know, the Bill Parcells, the Tom Coughlins, the edgy guys, the hard edge guys are really what NFL coaches are all about. But the league has changed, you know. Now it's it's about recruiting free agents and getting young guys excited to play football every day at practice. And I tell you, nobody does that better than that guy right there. He is Mr. Enthusiasm 24 hours a day. Their practices are upbeat. They're energetic. These players love them, and uh, big reason why they're winning so much. Hard to believe. 19 years ago, for one season, he was the head coach of the New York Jets. And went to New England. Uh, got sandwiched in between Parcells leaving and Belichick coming. I know Bob Kraft really liked them, but knew that he had a chance to get Belichick. And come get it right huh? This will end the game. A little kneel down here by Wilson. Not particularly pretty. Not on the night when you have 22 penalties for 205 penalty yards. Nobody's statistics were impressive, but the final score 29 to 3. 49ers go home one and one. Meet Indianapolis at Candlestick next week. Seattle stays right here and they'll take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. And so coming up next, it'll be the Wendy's post-game report after these messages for your NBC 